Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this new video. I would like to just take a moment to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel over the past two months. I really appreciate your support. I hope you are enjoying these videos and I very much enjoyed your comments. For today's video, I am using a couple of products from Honey Bee Stamps. Uh, this um, Farmhouse Tree Detail Stencil, this also comes with a stamp set. I didn't purchase the stamp set. I was really interested in this stencil. Um, it is a one sheet stencil that has multiple layers and multiple elements. So I'm going to be using this today. I'm going to be using a watercolor technique with some Distress Oxide inks. And then from this Scandinavian Christmas stamp and die set, I'll be using this, uh, this sentiment, all is calm, all is bright. This set also comes with dies. It's a really nice set. And I hope to be able to do a video later this week um, and create a card using this set. For the paper today, I am going to use a watercolor technique. I'm using watercolor paper. This paper is uh, four and a half by six. I will cut it down to a final size of three and three quarter by five with um, a waffle flower A2 layer die. And I also have um, my favorite Hero Arts Hero Hues 111 pound cardstock. This is cranberry. This panel is four by five and a quarter. I have a very small piece of craft cardstock here. This is to cut the sentiment. Um, I will be cutting additional uh, sentiments uh, to stack these and give this a little bit of dimension on the front of the card. And this is the card base. And this is a heavyweight craft card stock. This is an A2 size, so it is um, four and a quarter, I'm sorry, eight and a half by five and a half. And I will uh, score this and fold it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. I also have a very small piece of uh, jute cord here. It's so oh, about six to eight inches long to tie a small bow for the front of the card. I'm going to start by mixing up um, a little bit of this Distress Oxide ink in my um, my metal pan here. So this has two layers. There is this um, uh, lower base layer for the tree and then there's an accent layer that goes on the top. So I'm going to start out with this lower base layer and it is going to be just uh, Rustic Wilderness, just a, a green layer, not too much ink here. I want to want a little bit of color. Take down my stencil. Okay, so I have some I have some uh, rustic wilderness here on my pan and I have a number four round watercolor brush and I'm going to try to keep my brush um, not really sopping wet because this is a stencil and it will the watercolor ink will run under the stencil so try to get a lot of the color off of my brush here in the middle and then as the watercolor paper gets wet, this color will sort of just naturally run up into the, the area that's already wet here at the end of these branches. But this will just keep the, um, keep the color from bleeding out outside, the, outside of this stencil. So I'm looking for a very watercolor looking effect here. Um, I'm not trying to be perfect as far as uh, the outline of this stencil. In some places I'm patting on the ink, in other places I am painting on the ink, and I, I want this watercolor look where it's uh, varied. Some places it's darker, some places it's lighter.
Okay, this is a really nice background. Um, I'm going to leave this ink here. Um, probably needs just a tiny bit more water. And I'm going to add a little bit of faded jeans to my rustic wilderness that is already on my mat. And just a little bit. Um, the blue will deepen this green. And it will give me a darker, deeper green that will be my second layer of ink. I'm going to wipe off my stencil just a little bit to make sure none of this transfers over to the other side of the watercolor paper. great things about this stencil you don't have to line it up perfectly it's um, it's a top accent layer so I have found that pretty much anywhere I put this stencil the card turns out looking really really good so after I finish battling this piece of tape okay so here's another little tip for using this stencil as well um, the watercolor paper will bow a little bit as it starts to take on this water. So I'm just sort of holding down the stencil with one hand as I move down, move down the stencil from top to bottom. Just to make sure that the ink doesn't go everywhere underneath. Though honestly, it's a it's um, this top layer, it's just a really cool effect with this. Uh, slightly darker, um, I guess I kind of in my mind refer to this as the blue spruce color. Box. I'm not sure how easy this stencil is on um, the bristles of a, of a paintbrush, so I'm using um, one that isn't isn't uh, quite so nice, just in case. I'll give my ink just another little spritz. I'm getting down to the bottom of my puddle of ink here. Okay, let's check that out. That looks great. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give this just a second to dry, clean up all of my watercolor stuff here, and then start working on the next part of the card. Okay, so next up is this burlap sack here. And I want this to be centered on the tree. And I'm going to use aged mahogany and I am also going to use a little bit of black soot as an accent and I think for this one um, instead of watercolor I think I'm going to uh, use my number five detail blending brush this is an Altenew brush um, because I really want to do a little bit of, of um, shading here so I'll start with the aged mahogany and just go around the outside of the stencil. This actually ends up looking like watercolor. I'm going heavier at the top here to cover up this top part of the tree. 
And then very light here in the center, this will be the highlight area on the bag. So I'm leaving that mostly white. So for the black, I'll go just around the edges. I'm just deepening this aged mahogany. That looks good. So the burlap sack is finished and I am all finished with this stencil now. So I'll go ahead and clean this up, clean up my space, and then we will move on to some die cutting. Okay, next step, I am going to add an embossed uh, double stitching outline around this watercolor image and then I am going to die cut um, this down to let's see um, the final size is three and three quarter by five so I have my my die marked here this is the one I used to cut my test card and um, I use these quite a bit this lawn fawn just stitching double rectangles set they don't cut they only emboss uh, the double rectangle stitched impression they are really nice these um, these two sets are probably one of the um, most used sets in my entire collection of stamps and dies I do use these a lot um, if you follow my channel you know I pull these out quite a bit um, for some accent and then just to die cut my rectangles so I'm going to run these through my Gemini. Get everything all lined up here. These sets work really well together. I'm going to run through for the double rectangles first and then I will come back and line up this die cut. Okay, here is my embossed panel. So I have these double um, stitched rectangles here and then my die fits perfectly along the outside. So I will tape this in place once I get it centered and run it back through the Gemini. So I'm going to use a lot of tape just to make sure it doesn't shift around on me. I cut my panel and the next step is to go ahead and adhere it to this red panel. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of treatment on the front here and I don't want to mess up anything that might be still a little bit wet. The adhesive might still be a little bit wet. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this on now. I'm going to use some foam tape to adhere this to my red panel. This is a Kathy Zilski um, little tip here. 
and I have never put these panels onto um, a base layer as straight as I have since I started using Kathy's little trick here of just putting some adhesive on your tape so it doesn't stick quite as quickly and permanently as you're trying to move this around and make sure that everything is lined up. And it really does just um, sort of work like a little miracle. So thank you to Kathy Zolski for, for that tip. Okay, so I have this on my base layer and now I am going to add some of my embellishments here on the front. I have a couple of different things that I'm going to use. Um, these are just some little red confetti hearts. They're very tiny. I believe I got these at um, Joanne Fabric and Crafts. Um, if I can figure out where I got them, I'll link in the description on where to find these. Obviously, you can just also use some little um, little red embellishments like my pearls here, uh, but red. Um, size, you know, the, the proportion of the tree to the little sequins that you're going to use obviously matters. So I am going to place these first, and then once I have them in a pattern that I like, I will start to glue them down. Okay, so I have my embellishments on. The last thing I'm going to do is I am going to put some tiny, tiny dots of this pops of color. This is pearl satin in between each of these little hearts. And it is such a small amount. Um, you can't really see it, but your eye picks it up and it just adds a little something to the card. So... Um, being very careful here not to squeeze too hard. I have, I did just clean out the nozzle of this right before I started just to make sure I didn't get any very large um, squirts of pops of color while I'm trying to do this. But you can see it's just the tiniest, tiniest dot.
Okay, oops, a little hard on me. I'm going to give this just a moment to dry. And while that is drying, I'm going to tie my ribbon. And I'm just using the bunny ears technique. This is more ribbon than I need. But sometimes I, when I'm tying a ribbon like this, I need extra ribbon because I just get very fumbly about it. But I'm tying just a little basic bow and I will make it small so it's proportional to my tree and my burlap sack. And that looks like a pretty good size. Hold this on with my reverse tweezers until it's dry. And once everything is set, I will come back and put everything on the card base and the card um, will be ready for a sentiment. Okay, I have the Scandinavian Christmas stamp and die set. I'm going to use this all is calm, all is bright sentiment. And I'm going to stamp it on this craft card stock and I am going to I'm going to use uh, this aged mahogany. I think it goes really well with all of the other colors on the card. I'm going to line up the die, and this die is a really close fit. It cuts very close to the stamping. And then I'm going to cut this, and I'm also going to cut uh, three additional die cuts so I can pop this up on the front of the card. Okay, here are my die cuts. I'm going to layer these. Layering is a great way to avoid having to cut lots and lots of little uh, foam squares into slivers in order to get some dimension for a greeting. So you can see this adds um, maybe about a quarter of an inch, which is about what you would get with some foam tape. And these are very small pieces of craft cardstock that maybe would have just gone into the scrap bin. So um, I'm going to decide where I want to put this. And I think right here is a good place. Sort of here in the center, off-centered a little. Make sure I have this straight. Okay, so the only thing left to do is to adhere this to the card base.
I'm going to use liquid glue so it'll give me a little bit of time to slip this around here and get it perfectly centered on my card. That looks good. And that is the completed card. I have several other versions. I've been working on this card for a couple of days now. And I wanted to use the other elements on this stencil. So there's a star here that is three layers. And I wanted to be able to use that as well. So I ended up, in order to get this whole thing on a card, I ended up doing a five by seven. And this is, um, let's see, I believe the ink was fossilized amber. And then the second layer of the stencil, I stenciled that on with Lawn Fawn gold stencil paste. So that's a really nice effect. And then I also used the basket, this little wicker basket, instead of the burlap bag on the bottom. Um, the sentiment is from uh, Spellbinders, Yana's Christmas Sentiments. I believe that was new for this holiday season for 2022. And I uh, am, I'm sorry, hot foiled this with a bronze hot foil. It also um, comes with all of these dies. So that's a really nice set. I used it on a couple of these cards, in fact. Uh, this one is a little bit different. I used a detail blending brush instead of using watercolor. So you can see how different this looks here, how um, it's just much more crisp with the blending brush and the stencil rather than using the watercolors. Just a totally different look. Um, went around the outside here with vintage photo and then I used some uh, Gina K Glitz glitter gel to create some snow here at the bottom. Uh, this is perfect pearls over the top of, um, I think I used glossy accents for these little dots, and then just gold perfect pearls over the top, just a little dusting. Uh, so that is the second card. And then this card's very much the same as the card that I just made, except I did stitch around um, the outside here with some burgundy thread and just stitched this panel on. So a little bit different, but lots of different variations of this card. Um, very versatile. I love versatile stamps and dies. This stencil, you can see there are lots of different things that you can do with it based on kind of the look that you're going for. So I will have everything up on my blog later today, everything I used for all of the different versions of this card. Thank you so much for watching. And again, thank you to those subscribers. I really, really appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next video.